Hey what's up guys and welcome to the Head Start Lab series Volume 5 on Music Production. Now this is a free tutorial brought to you by the Recording Connection Audio Program, the only program that gets you inside a real studio where you learn from industry professionals on their equipment. In this video series we're going to show you everything that you need to know about music production. And all these videos were made from real tutoring sessions at the Recording Connection. So in addition to learning in a real professional studio, all of our students receive free unlimited tutoring sessions while in the program. Let's go ahead and begin. Hey, how's it going guys? Eddie Martinez here with the Recording Radio and Film Connection and welcome back to the Head Start Lab series. Now in this video, uh, we are going to go ahead and continue forward with our uh, in-depth look in how to create a song in Logic Pro X, but I also want to go ahead and clarify some things with you in regards to organization as well. Uh, one of the best things that you could do for yourself when you're mixing or making a song is to properly label everything that you're doing and even, you know, to a certain extent, even kind of color coordinate all your tracks and things like that, just not only to make it more pleasant on the eye, but just make it easier for you to go ahead and find what you're looking to do uh, in regards to mixing in the song. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, focus on that right now with the drums. Okay, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of different drum tracks right here, and there's really no telling, you know, which instrument is what uh, unless you actually solo it and then listen to it. And when it comes to mixing, this is going to be kind of like a headache if you don't label everything correctly. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Now, one of the very first things that I like to do uh, when I'm organizing my tracks is to really first, uh, you know, visual, visually look at it. Uh, so I like to go ahead and have different sections of the drums that actually start first be the first things that are, are at the very top so that I can find them a little bit quicker. So uh, like this one right here, I'm going to go ahead. Actually, you know what? I'll leave that one back where it was. Uh, I'm going to move this one up. I'm pretty sure that's a snare. This looks like it's a whole bunch of 16th notes or something like that. So it's got to be like a hi-hat or something like that. So, you, you know, once you get better and better at uh, identifying these things just visually, it's going to help you a lot as well. Let's go ahead. You know what? I think I moved something a little weird. I think uh, what we need to do is not move the track, but uh, move the this right here. So that's that was the mistake. But yeah, let's go ahead and move this around too. And as you can see, uh, there's empty spaces. So we're going to wait to till those parts actually come in a little bit later. Looks looks like it's coming in at the beginning. It'll be it'll definitely help us identify our tracks so that we can name them a little bit a little bit better. So of course this does always take a minute or so to go ahead and do, but it's well worth it. I mean, maybe spending a couple minutes here or there to uh, do this is gonna make a bigger difference when you're trying to mix all these tracks down, I'd say. Oops, let's go ahead and move this one up higher. Actually, this one starts first. And you don't have to do it exactly the way that I do it. This is the way that I like doing it uh, for myself. Okay, so next what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to solo track, hit play, and then identify that track, and then name it. So let's go ahead. So that's obviously the kick. Now what you can go ahead and do now is hit shift N and name it kick. Cool. Uh, we'll go ahead and move over to our next instrument. That's obviously our snare. So again, shift N. Oh, make sure you got the right track select to shift in. You can go ahead and hit snare or right snare. Awesome. Move on to the next one. Probably some hi hats. So we got a closed hi hat right here. Let's go ahead and name that. Shift in. Oh, let's go ahead and cancel that. Shift in, and we'll do. Cool. We'll move over to our next track. So we got a closed uh, hi hat, a different, but maybe a, a second sound. So we'll do close hi hat too. Nice. And we'll move over to our next track. So we got a, a brush sound. We'll go ahead and write brush right here. Shift then. Let's 
go ahead and move over to our next track. We got a second uh, kick right here. So let's go ahead and title that. We'll do kick two. Awesome. And again, like I said, uh, you know, it's kind of a one of those longer processes, but definitely helps you out. So uh, yeah, do it. I'm gonna call this a shaker. Sounds a bit like a shaker. I know that it's probably not exactly a shaker, but it has a shaker type of feel. And I'll know, I'll know exactly what I mean later on. So I'll be like, oh yeah, it's that shaker sound. But it's really a ticking sound, if anything, but I think writing tick would just sound funny or look funny. That sounded like an open hi-hat. Yeah, it was an open hi-hat, so let's go ahead and name that. We got a zap, so we'll want to name that, of course. Cool, we're almost there, a couple more to go. Let's go ahead and move this back a little bit. We got a zap two or zap drop. Sounds like it has a had a bit of a drop there, but cool. A few more to go. It sounds like a a rim hit. So we'll go ahead and hit uh, select that again. Shift N. Let's type in rim. Move over to our next sound. It seems right there. Let's go ahead and listen to it. You know, these actually, these zap sounds could be like weird Tom. So I'm going to do, I'm going to write Tom instead. It's just uh, gradually getting lower and lower. So we'll call that Tom. high call this medium we'll call this one low and we're probably going to change the arrangement of it so that we have them grouped together Something like that. That's better. We got one more to go. Very cool. Almost there. And we got a cool little clap right here. So let's go ahead and shift in. Right clap. And now when we're mixing down our tracks, it's going to be a lot easier to find the exact instrument that we're looking for when we want to add inserts to, uh, you know, specific sounds, let's say like an insert to the snare that, you know, you normally add that same insert to, let's say like a reverb or a delay or something like that, uh, that you like to use. You can easily identify where the snare is, add that insert, and it's just going to help you with the workflow. So I hope this video is helpful, guys. Of course, we're going to move along in our series in the next video. So of course, I'll catch you guys for that one. Peace. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're watching this video and you're not currently enrolled to the Recording Connection, this is only a small taste of what you could be learning in our program. The Recording Connection provides all of our students with industry standard software, like Pro Tools, to take your engineering skills to the next level. We also provide books with excellent lesson plans, a professional studio engineer who will mentor you and show you how to operate real studio equipment, and so much more. With the Recording Connection, getting finances a breeze. We have many different tuition options, so getting hooked up at a studio near you is fast and easy. For more information, check out www.recordingconnection.com. And of course, I'll catch you guys on the next video.